Namaste Gurudev, everyone. Welcome to this wonderful session where Dr. Rao is going to take us through the wonderful mathematics behind Rudra Chamakam. We have all heard Gurudev talking about uh, Rudra, where he explained the meaning behind Namakam. And later he referred very briefly to Chamakam. And uh, Rudra Chamakam has a lot of prayers for asking for our desires to be fulfilled. And then it suddenly talks about a few numbers. Now, what are those numbers? Why are they there? There is some mathematical basis to it. And uh, Dr. Rao, our mathematical genius, has exploded. So over to Dr. Rao to explain to us all that he has learned and enlighten us. Jai Gurudev, everybody. And uh, uh, thank you all for being here. I'm so excited, actually, because I, you know, this, I wanted to share this with uh, all of you for a long time now, but the time came just now. So first of all, my pranams to the lotus feet of my master. Om Guru Bihoyana Maha Hari Om. So, whatever I'm going to present to you is purely his Guru Tattva. So, don't attribute any genius to me. I looks like I was like a, a like a, 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 a channel, you know. So, uh, just very exciting. So all of you, did, how many of you knew that amongst all the homas and chants that are chanted in the art of living, anywhere across, Rudra, Rudram chant or the Rudra homa, it is the maximum number of times it happens. I think we all know this, right? Ever since we joined art of living, we are all there, you know, because Monday morning, the Rudra Homa will happen, right? And also any pujas that are done, anything that is done, we will always see the Rudra Homa that is happening, right? So we all know that this Rudra Homa has got something about it, which is uh, very, very important, not just for an organization, but for an individual, you know, for a family, for a country, uh, for the whole planet, for the whole universe. Why not? Yeah. Because it has got something very, very fundamental embedded in it, right? And uh, for those of you who, uh, you know, want to uh, talk about uh, what this Rudra Homa, where does it come from? I mean, many of you will know. It is a part of one of the 108 Upanishads. Uh, it is there in the Yajur Veda and in the Krishna Shaka, uh, in the fourth Khanda, the fifth Prashna. The Prashna means topic, yeah? We have this, uh, the, the, the Rudram, yeah, the Sri Rudram that is uh, there. And then we have in that two parts. There are 11 Anuvakas and 11 Anuvakas, two parts. And you will find that there is actually so much of math in this. It's unbelievable. But I have to make it very, very simple so that everybody understands, right? So that is the main challenge for me. And that is why I think the grace of the master is so important for us. So... In the first one, everything will be like Namaha, 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 and it is invoking the various aspects of Rudra. The Rudra Tattva, yeah. The Rudra Tattva is one of the more fundamental forces of the universe. Yeah. It is one of the more fundamental creative forces of the universe that generates all the reality that we know. So the various forms of Rudra Tattva, and in Mandala Vatika, uh, we all know what tattvas are, right? We have invited them into our lives and we have all had such blissful experiences doing that in Mandala Vatika courses. So the tattva is a frequency. It's one of the building blocks, okay? So like uh, magnetism is a wave, gravity is a wave, uh, uh, light, light, photons are waves. So everything is a wave. The particles are only illusory. That's a maya of creation. We all know that, right? So in this Maya, for the creation of this Maya, this manifest world that we experience, the Rudra Tattva is one of the very fundamental Tattvas that, are, that is there in operation. And in the first half, it is just taking the names of the various forms of uh, Rudra. And this happens in most of the, uh, of the Homas and in most of our Shastras. It happens. We take a particular Tattva and we give all the attributes of the tattva. And it is said that if you are sitting in that homa 
And as the names are being chanted of each of those attributes, if you can internalize that, by the end of that chant, the attributes of that tattva are imbibed by you. This is the principle of sitting in a puja. In a sitting in a puja, what happens? All these chants are going on. And when these chants are going on, if you internalize each of those sounds, which give the attribute of that particular wave frequency, yeah, then you imbibe those wave frequencies and you become that particular tattva in the manifest universe of yours. So that is, this is the basic principle, you know, so uh, let us uh, keep to that. But in the second half, very interestingly, in the second half, this is called the chamakam. So the first one was namakam. The second one is called the chamakam. In the chamakam, everything uh, ends with chame, chame. Chame essentially means uh, bestow to me, give me. Chame, uh, ma, chame. So chame means give it to me. It is probably one of the few uh, parts in the Upanishads where you will find such blatant, unabashed asking. You know, in our Vedic uh, uh, philosophy, we don't ask because already God has given us everything. But in the in the chamakam, it is unabashed and there is no, no holding back. In fact, it is said that there are 347 things that are asked for in the chamakam. You know, give me this, give me that, give me that, give me the mountains, give me fresh air, give me water, and it goes on. And I have a beautiful clipping of Gurudev actually uh, telling us this. And then suddenly something happens and suddenly numbers give me one, give me two, give me three. I mean, it's not two actually. Give me one, give me three, give me five. It goes on the odd series. And then the four times table, give me four, give me eight, give me 12, goes on. Nobody understands why exactly this is a lot of arbitrary explanations are given. You know, three means the Trimurti, one means the Atma, five means the Pancha Mahabhutas, like that some arbitrary, but nothing really that ties everything to why these sequences should be there. And uh, so what we will do is first, let us listen to this uh, particular sequence uh, uh, of uh, the... Um, Oh, yeah. Let us uh, listen to this and after that we will come back and see what Gurudev has to say about this. And one hint is there for people who are very tuned in the background as the chants are being done. I have given the number in Sanskrit with an equation. Some of you will get it, but it's not important if you get it or not. We, I will explain it to you later. Just so beautiful. No, we were just listening to it. You know, it's so soothing. And you know, when I was a kid, the only time I used to perk up in these homas was when this chant number chant came. Yeah, because as a kid, the only Sanskrit you knew was, you know, ekam, dvi, trini, chatwari, like that. You know, if you knew numbers, so suddenly you heard something that you recognized, but no idea what it meant. Yeah. And I didn't really have an idea what it meant. Till 
Gurudev recently did the Sri Rudram course. Yeah. In that, he said something very special. And let's hear what he said in that particular course. Wheat, we want rice, we want dal, and we want oil, we want gold, we want steel, and everything. We want the uh, we want iron, we want gold, we want silver, and it talks about everything, all nice, good things that you want to possess in the uh, when you live on the planet. Uh, we want mountains, we want waters, we want purity, pure air, and then. There is something very mysterious in the second part that says about numbers. And number, first all odd numbers and then multiples of four. I would like uh, some um, mathematicians here to mm, look into this, you know, and see what do these numbers mean. I have vaguely, I vaguely remember once a mathematician said, this is how the computer works. The whole programming and computer technologies come with these sort of numbers and they do have some meaning. I think someone should go deep in to do some research on that. Because why it is said uh, by all the even odd numbers first and then the multiples of four even numbers are mentioned and say this is all for me, for my um, benefit. You know, when I heard Gurudev say this, it was so funny because I felt he was talking to me. When he said somebody should do research in that, you know, it was like, boom, something happened in my brain. My brain just exploded because after that, 72 hours straight, I, I couldn't sleep. It was not I was feverish or something like that. It was that something which he said made immediate sense and I had to explore it. And what I'm going to present today to you is that journey of exploring these numbers purely because of the master's grace. It's not my <laughs> genius that has found what I'm going to present to you, but it's truly the, the genius of the master, you know, the, the grace of the master. Yeah. Uh, just give me a thumbs up. You could hear the video. Uh, the, uh, the sound in the video was clear for you guys, right? Okay, thanks. So now what exactly, how exactly do I tell you what this means? Why do these number sequences happen? I will just go back to how creation happens because you know, whenever we are doing these homas and pujas and all these things, what really we are doing is we are trying to bring those energies of creation into our lives so that they will bestow us all the good things that we want. So I can understand the devotee asking for gold and silver and water and pure air and all that. But when he says, give me one, give me three, give me five, give me seven, up to 33, and it stops. And then the four times table, give me four, give me eight, give me 12, up to 44, and it stops. So why first one odd number series and then not an even number series, but multiples of four? Why should the odd number stop at 33? Why should four, why the four times table should stop at 44? See, there must be some logic to this, right? It can't be that just like that for fun. You know, somebody said, let's let, let's let's put them on a wild goose chase and I'll we'll give them in the middle of the chant, we'll put some numbers and leave it. For the next uh, 10,000 years, people will be cracking their head why this is so. No, it can't be like that. It can't be like that, right? They did it because there was some severe reason for this, right? So how do I explain? So to explain this, I want you for some time in this talk to imagine yourself as a creator. This is what we do in Mandala Vatika course. In Mandala Vatika course, everybody becomes the creator. You become the creator and you invite the tattva into your life and let the tattva manifest for you. So here also, let us try to understand what is required if I have to become a creator. Yeah. So let us understand some fundamental principles. Now, 
There are three things that are required. It's okay. So let me just take the annotate uh, spotlight. Yeah, let me take the annotate spotlight there. And um, uh, spotlight. Yeah, so you can see this red dot. Red dot is my uh, sort of uh, cursor. So first of all, replication must happen with very few set rules. Yeah, very few set rules. You will see replication should happen. It should be self-organizing and self-learning. Today with artificial intelligence, we know how self-learning happens. Yeah, if you have any questions put in your chat, let me finish my entire uh, presentation. And after that, we can come back to any questions you may have. Okay. But at, right now, just listen and imbibe what I'm trying to say. Yeah. So it has to become self-organizing. It has to become self-learning. And then there should be the second principle is that there should be a push-pull. If there are devas, there should be asuras. If there is happiness, there should be sadness. If there is abundance, there should be scarcity. These things have to happen simultaneously. Then only self-regulation happens, you know. So the self-regulation that we talk about will happen only when this is there. So we have to see that self-regulation must happen. Yeah. Then the next one is that very simple building block should be there. That, you know, people who have done Mandalavatya course already know when we talk about things like Mandelbrot set and things like that, very simple uh, building blocks and you can make fabulous, very complicated, very complicated, uh, 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 you know, creations, right? So let us go through this. So in the initial part, just try to understand how these number sequences therefore become a part of this creative process. Yeah. So let us try to look at that now. Now, if we look at this, for example, let me just try and take this out. Yeah. So here is something that is happening here. Yeah. So suppose you have a simple simulation that you create in a 3D in a 3D space, in a computer, or you can do this even in reality, in physical reality with robots. But if you allow self-organization to take place, then actually creation will happen. And I will show you this. You know, if, the, if there is just segments that are dividing, one becomes two, two becomes four, then you will see a very branch tree-like thing evolving. And it evolves by itself, yeah? If it has a body segment and a leg segment, you can see here that there is a body segment and a leg segment, and it is uh, becomes another kind of animal. If there is a body, head, and limb, it becomes another kind of animal, uh, a four-limbed animal. But all these things, they actually start to create a world, a creation happens. And with this is happening because it's self-organizing and it is self-learning. So let us see a little... Uh, video of how this creation is actually happening. And you can see this video here. You can see here all these different shapes that are moving about. This is not an animation program. This is actually these blocks self-organizing themselves, learning how to move about and moving about. This is not a, this is not somebody's, uh, I am not guiding this simulation. This simulation is happening. See, if you give it a light, it goes to the light. It learns that if it get, it will get a reward if it goes to the light. So it is simulating so that it can <coughs> join in there. Yeah. Now you can see them fighting for food. The green cube is food. And then you will find these building blocks fighting for food and trying to garner the food. This is incredible. This happens without any human intervention. You can create like this. And this is what the original creator would have done. He would have put some few self-organizing, self-learning, self-replicating set of rules. And with that, this entire simulation would have happened. The second one is that you see that there is a yin and yang push-pull system that is operating. Yeah. So there is a push-pull system that is operating and I can best show that with a speed governor. You know, these blue uh, balls that are there, when the thing, thing spins very fast, it opens up Yeah, because of the centrifugal force. These balls start to come outwards and then that 
Op that shuts off a valve which is giving the air or the fuel so that the speed comes down. If the speed comes down, then the balls come down closer to each other and then the valve opens and the speed increases. So just by doing nothing, <clears throat> just by putting a setting there, you can create a self-governing system. So this is this is a very simple example that I'm showing and you can see what's- Watch it move this. up and down as I impose a load with my finger on the flywheel. All right, now watch and maybe listen. You know, it's almost barking a little bit, like a big old case steam engine, isn't it? Watch the centrifugal balls. I really wish I had a little prony brake now to test this, but now this is remarkable. So what you see here is a simple push-pull system which operates and takes care of itself, right? So two things we had. Um, uh, Raja, just see, Vishaka Iyer is complete all the time putting her hand up for something. I don't know what it is, but uh, just make sure if maybe it's already 500 participants. So I don't think more people can get in because this Zoom has got a limit of 500. But uh, you know, um, you were able to watch the video. You could see the dialogue behind it, the audio. All that was clear. A thumbs up. Yeah, you could hear it. Thanks. So we are on track. So uh, basically what we need to understand is the first two things are there. One is it should be self-organizing, self-learning and have very few sets of rules to uh, become a creator, to become a created space, a creation. And then it should have a push-pull system. Yeah, like, like in our lives, you know, if, whether it's black holes and white holes, whether it is uh, galaxies swallowing each other or galaxies exploding, uh, you know, stars forming, stars dying. <clears throat> Everything is a push-pull process so that the balance is retained. Yeah. So the creation becomes sustainable. It doesn't go and implode or explode. It continues. Okay. And the last part of it is the more interesting part of it, which is it should happen because of a it should happen because of very simple building blocks. So people who are who have done Mandala Vatika, they will know about this particular uh, equation. Uh, Z equals Z square plus C. It's a most simple equation, right? There is Z, Z, there are only two terms. But what we are doing is, whatever is the new value of Z, we introduce it back into this equation. And that equation becomes the new value. And it just reiterates. So this equation in here, the Z square plus C becomes the new value of Z plus one, the next Z. This will get introduced here. A new value is formed and it goes on and on and on. And you have seen the beautiful pictures of Mandelbrot uh, sets, you know, which are created. But what I'm going to show you actually blew my mind because this was one of the equations that was run. And what you see here is a hint at the genius of our master. Because those of you who are familiar with Art of Living and the Ashram campus will notice some very interesting structure. A very interesting structure that is being generated in this Mandelbrot, which is called the Visalakshi Mantam. So let's just have a, a, a 3D uh, rendering, a 3D zoom into the Mandelbrot set uh, which is having the power two, we will also do power three and four later. But what does that generate to us in terms of a fabulously complicated creation happening from such a simple equation? Yeah.
what do you see there? You could see that beautiful structure, which is so reminiscent of our Vishalakshi Mantap. And in the last part of the animation, that entire mandala pattern was, is the Rudra mandala. You know, last uh, uh, Navratri, uh, Anna had uh, made the Rudra mandala. He put it up uh, in the ashram. Uh, this was, I think, just before the COVID started. And we had this Rudra Mandala drawn for the first time in the ashram. And what you see in this Mandelbrot deep dive uh, zoom in the 3D is the Rudra Mandala. And in the midst of that Rudra Mandala comes up the structure, which is so reminiscent of our Visalakshi Mandala. So, you know, we never know. I mean, I was, uh, sometimes I used to visit the campus. Uh, I used to be based in Dubai at that time. But, uh, you know, um, Vinod Menanji, he used to take me and he used to say, come, VM is being built. You also give your input. You're an architect, so come and give some inputs. And I used to go there and they would be explaining very simply. But today, I realize what actually he was creating there. You know, he was creating a portal for the Rudra Tattva to manifest so that it can manifest in each one of our lives. This is, this is something beyond our understanding, you know. But again, in Mandala Vatika, all these become a part of our understanding, you know. It becomes a part of our understanding. So it's just uh, amazing. So now what we will do is understanding that from very simple equations, like Z equals Z square plus C. One simple equation like that, you can create extraordinary things. One simple push-pull system, you can have a sustaining universe. And some simple rules of self-learning and self-replication, and you can create. You can create two worlds. See, creation happens in two realms. Two worlds. Two prapanch mein jo hai, creation hota hai. Ek creation apke sir ke andar. One creation happens inside our head. This is a world we create. We create this world for ourselves. Yeah. So there is one creation that's happening in our head. And then there is the one creation of the universe, the manifest reality outside us that is happening. Yeah. So there is one creation, which is our mental creation. And then there is the physical creation. Now, where does this number sequences relate to that? That is what we are going to see in this talk. Yeah. So I'm just trying to build up how this all these things mesh together so we have a coherent explanation jo explanation abhi gurudev ke dwara mujhe aapke paas main pesh karne ka mauka mil raha hai wo ek coherent explanation hona chahiye matlab wo ek logical hona chahiye jaisa hamara sankhya shastra like our sankhya shastra which i will get to a little later it is the i don't know i think it's one of the most extraordinary mathematical expositions in our Vedas, everything is deep mathematics. It's all the principle of causality, the axioms of cause, cause and effect. So mathematically done. Yeah, so mathematically done. So how does the math, which is like Z equals Z squared plus C, a little bit of self-balancing, yin-yang principle, and a little few sets for replication. How this is embedded in our Rudram Chamaka. That is what we are going to understand. Just imagine we have 500 people. <laughs> I mean, all I can say is thank you to my wonderful team who have done a phenomenal job of giving publicity to my wife Rukmini, who has been my, my, my support and, uh, you know, absolute uh, rock, uh, you know, in my pursuit of this kind of uh, uh, knowledge. And, uh, you know, it's just beautiful. But, uh, yeah, let's uh, just quickly get on because I am hoping that, yeah. Now again, we now try to, I will now try to show you something. I will try to show you math. A ganit ke bare mein mein bataunga, which you would never have understood that something as simple which you which was taught to you in the first standard or second standard could be so beautiful Hannah, this is something extraordinary so let us watch something a very very dear friend of mine 
who is Bukhard Polster, where he is uh, a, a, he works in the university uh, in a, a university in Australia, a dear friend of mine with whom I have a lot of interaction. And uh, he has this beautiful presentation uh, on something called time tables. Okay, so to start off, I've got four, four images for you. So let's have a look at them. So one, two, three, four. Now, a uh, quick question, what do all of them have in common? <laughs> but they're actually pictures of time tables. Ah, okay. <laughs> pictures of time tables. I better explain this, all right? So to get these pictures, what you do is um, you start with a circle and then you pick a random number, okay? And we'll just choose something nice to start with, so 10, okay? So then with 10, we put 10 points on the, on the perimeter here, equally spaced, and then we label them with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, let's just go. Actually, we start with zero, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, who, and then 10 we also want. So we kind of put that right there again. So that's also 10, that's also 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and so on, okay? And then again, and so on, right? So this guy here stands for 1, 11, 21, 31, and so on, okay? And now we're going to do the two times table, okay? So two times table, and we'll start with zero. So two times zero is? Zero. So zero is the same thing, so we don't do anything. Okay, uh, two times one is? Two. Two, okay, so we connect the one to the two. Then uh, two times two is? Four. Okay, so we do this, and we keep on going, pretty obvious. Now five, two times five is? Ten. Ten, ten. remember, ten's also over there, so we connect that guy up. And then uh, two times six is 12, which is also the two, so we connect that one, and you kind of just keep on going like this, okay? And then you're at nine, and you've pretty much gone all the way around. Now you could go on, so for example, we could now do two times 10, and two times 11, and two times 12, and, and draw in those connections, but actually, the connections are gonna be exactly the ones that we've already drawn, which we can actually stop here. Just to illustrate, let's just go up to two. Two times 12 is? 24, which corresponds to the four, and that connection's already there, right? And two times 13 is 26, and we've already got the six. Of course, we made a choice there at the beginning, that 10, right? If you change that 10 to anything else, well, the picture changes, but pretty much everything I said stays the same, okay? So for example, if you switch from 10 to 11, we get this guy here, you know, and then 12, 13, 14, 15, and let's just see what happens. Okay, and actually, uh, I'll just highlight it a bit. So there's this strange curve here, it's actually got a name. It pops up all over mathematics. It's called a cardioid, um, like in cardiology, it means heart. There, right there, in the Mandelbrot set. So the biggest bulb in the Mandelbrot set is a cardioid. Um, now, just um, for those people who know something about this stuff, that's the the equation that we used to make up the Mandelbrot set, and there's a two in there, okay? So that's important, we just had the two times table. So let's just keep going, okay? Okay, now uh, we can also, instead of doing the um, two times table, we can do the three times table. And if we do the three times table, well, what we get is this pattern here for initial choice 10, and then I'll just, you know, up, up the numbers there, and what do we get? Whoa, another curve. Another very famous curve is called the nephroid which is a kidney, you know. <laughs> it's also in a generalized Mandelbrot set. So remember, uh, before we had an exponent two here, now we're talking about three times table, we changed the exponent to three, and you actually get the main bulb here being the nephroid. What else have we got? Four times? You know, you can see, you kind of see a pattern now. You know, four times gets you three, three petals. Before we had, you know, three times two petals. Um, Okay, and then all these other things that we've kind of been highlighting here, there were two there, you know, exponents gone up to four. There's one more guy here, that's the five. So it gets four petals. Um, and we've got the Mandelbrot set here. Okay, so let's just start again with two. Okay, so that was two times table. Um, now, one really nice thing to try is actually make the increments not one, to three, to four, to five, but actually do smaller increments. Okay, or actually do the, the, the transition here continuously. So I'll just show you, if I just do the multiplication times 2.1, what you get? 
uh, 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, 2.4, 2.5, 2.6, 2.7, 2.8, 2.9, 2.10, 2.11, 2.12, 2.13, 2.14, 2.15, 2.16, 2.17, 2.18, 2.19, 2.20, 2.21, 2.22, 2.23, 2.24, 2.25, 2.26, 2.27, 2.28, 2.29, 2.30, 2.31, 2.32, 2.33, 2.34, 2.35, 2.36, 2.37, 2.38, 2.39, 2.40, 2.41, 2.42, 2.43, 2.44, 2.45, 2.46, 2.47, 2.48, 2.49, 2.50, 2.51, 2.52, 2.53, 2.54, 2.55, 2.56, 2.57, 2.58, 2.59, 2.60, 2.61, 2.62, 2.63, 2.64, 2.65, 2.66, 2.67, 2.68, 2.69, 2.70, 2.71, 2.72, 2.73, 2.74, 2.75, 2.76, 2.77, 2.78, 2.79, 2.80, 2.81, 2.82, 2.83, 2.84, 2.85, 2.86, 2.87, 2.88, 2.89, 2.90, 2.91, 2.92, 2.93, 2.94, 2.95, 2.96, 2.97, 2.98, 2.99, 2.100, 2.101, 2.102, 2.103, 2.104, 2.105, 2.106, 2.107, 2.108, 2.109, 2.110, 2.111, 2.112, 2.113, 2.114, 2.115, 2.116, 2.117, 2.118, 2.119, 2.120, 2.121, 2.122, 2.123, 2.124, 2.125, 2.126, 2.127, 2.128, 2.129, 2.130, 2.131, 2.132, 2.133, 2.134, 2.135, 2.136, 2.137, 2.138, 2.139, 2.140, 2.151, 2.152, 2.153, 2.154, 2.155, 2.156, 2.157, 2.158, 2.159, 2.160, 2.170, 2.171, 2.172, 2.173, 2.174, 2.175, 2.176, 2.177, 2.178, 2.179, 2.180, 2.191, 2.192, 2.193, 2.194, 2.195, 2.196, 2.197, 2.198, 2.199, 2.200, 2.201, 2.202, 2.203, 2.204, 2.205, 2.206, 2.207, 2.208, 2.209, 2.210, 2.211, 2.212, 2.213, 2.214, 2.215, 2.216, 2.217, 2.218, 2.219, 2.220, 2.221, 2.222, 2.223, 2.224, 2.225, 2.226, 2.227, 2.228, 2.229, 2.230, 2.231, 2.232, 2.233, 2.234, 2.235, 2.236, 2.237, 2.238, 2.239, 2.240, 2.241, 2.242, 2.243, 2.244, 2.245, 2.246, 2.247, 2.248, 2.249, 2.250, 2.251, 2.252, 2.253, 2.254, 2.255, 2.256, 2.257, 2.258, 2.259, 2.260, 2.271, 2.272, 2.273, 2.274, 2.275, 2.276, 2.277, 2.278, 2.279, 2.280, 2.291, 2.292, 2.293, 2.294, 2.295, 2.296, 2.297, 2.298, 2.299, 2.300, 2.301, 2.302, 2.303, 2.304, 2.305, 2.306, 2.307, 2.308, 2.309, 2.310, 2.311, 2.312, 2.313, 2.314, 2.315, 2.316, 2.317, 2.318, 2.319, 2.320, 2.321, 2.322, 2.323, 2.324, 2.325, 2.326, 2.327, 2.328, 2.329, 2.330, 2.331, 2.332, 2.333, 2.334, 2.335, 2.336, 2.337, 2.338, 2.339, 2.440, 2.451, 2.452, 2.453, 2.454, 2.455, 2.456, 2.457, 2.458, 2.459, 2.460, 2.471, 2.472, 2.473, 2.474, 2.475, 2.476, 2.477, 2.478, 2.479, 2.480, 2.491, 2.492, 2.493, 2.494, 2.495, 2.496, 2.497, 2.498, 2.499, 2.510, 2.511, 2.512, 2.513, 2.514, 2.515, 2.516, 2.517, 2.518, 2.519, 2.520, 2.521, 2.522, 2.523, 2.524, 2.525, 2.526, 2.527, 2.528, 2.529, 2.530, 2.531, 2.532, 2.533, 2.534, 2.535, 2.536, 2.537, 2.538, 2.539, 2.540, 2.541, 2.542, 2.543, 2.544, 2.545, 2.546, 2.547, 2.548, 2.549, 2.550, 2.551, 2.552, 2.553, 2.554, 2.555, 2.566, 2.577, 2.578, 2.579, 2.580, 2.581, 2.582, 2.583, 2.584, 2.585, 2.596, 2.597, 2.508, 2.509, 2.510, 2.511, 2.512, 2.513, 2.514, 2.515, 2.516, 2.517, 2.518, 2.519, 2.520, 2.521, 2.522, 2.523, 2.524, 2.525, 2.526, 2.527, 2.528, 2.529, 2.530, 2.531, 2.532, 2.533, 2.534, 2.535, 2.536, 2.537, 2.538, 2.539, 2.540, 2.541, 2.542, 2.543, 2.544, 2.545, 2.546, 2.547, 2.548, 2.549, 2.550, 2.551, 2.552, 2.553, 2.554, 2.555, 2.566, 2.577, 2.578, 2.579, 2.580, 2.581, 2.582, 2.583, 2.584, 2.585, 2.596, 2.597, 2.508, 2.509, 2.510, 2.511, 2.512, 2.513, 2.514, 2.515, 2.516, 2.517, 2.518, 2.519, 2.520, 2.521, 2.522, 2.523, 2.524, 2.525, 2.526, 2.527, 2.528, 2.529, 2.530, 2.531, 2.532, 2.533, 2.534, 2.535, 2.536, 2.537, 2.538, 2.539, 2.540, 2.541, 2.542, 2.543, 2.544, 2.545, 2.546, 2.547, 2.548, 2.549, 2.550, 2.551, 2.552, 2.553, 2.554, 2.555, 2.566, 2.577, 2.578, 2.579, 2.580, 2.581, 2.582, 2.583, 2.584, 2.585, 2.596, 2.597, 2.508, 2.509, 2.510, 2.511, 2.512, 2.513, 2.514, 2.515, 2.516, 2.517, 2.518, 2.519, 2.520, 2.521, 2.522, 2.523, 2.524, 2.525, 2.526, 2.527, 2.528, 2.529, 2.530, 2.531, 2.532, 2.533, 2.534, 2.535, 2.536, 2.537, 2.538, 2.539, 2.540, 2.541, 2.542, 2.543, 2.544, 2.545, 2.546, 2.547, 2.548, 2.549, 2.550, 2.551, 2.552, 2.553, 2.554, 2.555, 2.566, 2.577, 2.578, 2.579, 2.580, 2.581, 2.582, 2.583, 2.584, 2.585, 2.596, 2.597, 2.508, 2.509, 2.510, 2.511, 2.512, 2.513, 2.514, 2.515, 2.516, 2.517, 2.518, 2.519, 2.520, 2.521, 2.522, 2.523, 2.524, 2.525, 2.526, 2.527, 2.528, 2.529, 2.530, 2.531, 2.532, 2.533, 2.534, 2.535, 2.536, 2.537, 2.538, 2.539, 2.540, 2.541, 2.542, 2.543, 2.544, 2.545, 2.546, 2.547, 2.548, 2.549, 2.550, 2.551, 2.552, 2.553, 2.554, 2.555, 2.566, 2.577, 2.578, 2.579, 2.580, 2.581, 2.582, 2.583, 2.584, 2.585, 2.596, 2.597, 2.508, 2.509, 2.510, 2.511, 2.512, 2.513, 2.514, 2.515, 2.516, 2.517, 2.518, 2.519, 2.520, 2.521, 2.522, 2.523, 2.524, 2.525, 2.526, 2.527, 2.528, 2.529, 2.530, 2.531, 2.532, 2.533, 2.534, 2.535, 2.536, 2.537, 2.538, 2.539, 2.540, 2.541, 2.542, 2.543, 2.544, 2.545, 2.546, 2.547, 2.548, 2.549, 2.550, 2.551, 2.552, 2.553, 2.554, 2.555, 2.566, 2.577, 2.578, 2.579, 2.580, 2.581, 2.582, 2.583, 2.584, 2.585, 2.596, 2.597, 2.508, 2.509, 2.510, 2.511, 2.512, 2.513, 2.514, 2.515, 2.516, 2.517, 2.518, 2.519, 2.520, 2.521, 2.522, 2.523, 2.524, 2.525, 2.526, 2.527, 2.528, 2.529, 2.530, 2.531, 2.532, 2.533, 2.534, 2.535, 2.536, 2.537, 2.538, 2.539, 2.540, 2.541, 2.542, 2.543, 2.544, 2.545, 2.546, 2.547, 2.548, 2.549, 2.550, 2.551, 2.552, 2.553, 2.554, 2.555, 2.566, 2.577, 2.578, 2.579, 2.580, 2.581, 2.582, 2.583, 2.584, 2.585, 2.596, 2.597, 2.508, 2.509, 2.510, 2.511, 2.512, 2.513, 2.514, 2.515, 2.516, 2.517, 2.518, 2.519, 2.520, 2.521, 2.522, 2.523, 2.524, 2.525, 2.526, 2.527, 2.528, 2.529, 2.530, 2.531, 2.532, 2.533, 2.534, 2.535, 2.536, 2.537, 2.538, 2.539, 2.540, 2.541, 2.542, 2.543, 2.544, 2.545, 2.546, 2.547, 2.548, 2.549, 2.550, 2.551, 2.552, 2.553, 2.554, 2.555, 2.566, 2.577, 2.578, 2.579, 2.580, 2.581, 2.582, 2.583, 2.584, 2.585, 2.596, 2.597, 2.508, 2.509, 2.510, 2.511, 2.512, 2.513, 2.514, 2.515, 2.516, 2.517, 2.518, 2.519, 2.520, 2.521, 2.522, 2.523, 2.524, 2.525, 2.526, 2.527, 2.528, 2.529, 2.530, 2.531, 2.532, 2.533, 2.534, 2.535, 2.536, 2.537, 2.538, 2.539, 2.540, 2.541, 2.542, 2.543, 2.544, 2.545, 2.546, 2.547, 2.548, 2.549, 2.550, 2.551, 2.552, 2.553, 2.554, 2.555, 2.566, 2.577, 2.578, 2.579, 2.580, 2.581, 2.582, 2.583, 2.584, 2.585, 2.596, 2.597, 2.508, 2.509, 2.510, 2.511, 2.512, 2.513, 2.514, 2.515, 2.516, 2.517, 2.518, 2.519, 2.520, 2.521, 2.522, 2.523, 2.524, 2.525, 2.526, 2.527, 2.528, 2.529, 2.530, 2.531, 2.532, 2.533, 2.534, 2.535, 2.536, 2.537, 2.538, 2.539, 2.540, 2.541, 2.542, 2.543, 2.544, 2.545, 2.546, 2.547, 2.548, 2.549, 2.550, 2.551, 2.552, 2.553, 2.554, 2.555, 2.566, 2.577, 2.578, 2.579, 2.580, 2.581, 2.582, 2.583, 2.584, 2.585, 2.596, 2.597, 2.508, 2.509, 2.510, 2.511, 2.512, 2.513, 2.514, 2.515, 2.516, 2.517, 2.518, 2.519, 2.520, 2.521, 2.522, 2.523, 2.524, 2.525, 2.526, 2.527, 2.528, 2.529, 2.530, 2.531, 2.532, 2.533, 2.534, 2.535, 2.536, 2.537, 2.538, 2.539, 2.540, 2.541, 2.542, 2.543, 2.544, 2.545, 2.546, 2.547, 2.548, 2.549, 2.550, 2.551, 2.552, 2.553, 2.554, 2.555, 2.566, 2.577, 2.578, 2.579, 2.580, 2.581, 2.582, 2.583, 2.584, 2.585, 2.596, 2.597, 2.508, 2.509, 2.510, 2.511, 2.512, 2.513, 2.514, 2.515, 2.516, 2.517, 2.518, 2.519, 2.520, 2.521, 2.522, 2.523, 2.524, 2.525, 2.526, 2.527, 2.528, 2.529, 2.530, 2.531, 2.532, 2.533, 2.534, 2.535, 2.536, 2.537, 2.538, 2.539, 2.540, 2.541, 2.542, 2.543, 2.544, 2.545, 2.546, 2.547, 2.548, 2.549, 2.550, 2.551, 2.552, 2.553, 2.554, 2.555, 2.566, 2.577, 2.578, 2.579, 2.580, 2.581, 2.582, 2.583, 2.584, 2.585, 2.596, 2.597, 2.508, 2.509, 2.510, 2.511, 2.512, 2.513, 2.514, 2.515, 2.516, 2.517, 2.518, 2.519, 2.520, 2.521, 2.522, 2.523, 2.524, 2.525, 2.526, 2.527, 2.528, 2.529, 2.530, 2.531, 2.532, 2.533, 2.534, 2.535, 2.536, 2.537, 2.538, 2.539, 2.540, 2.541, 2.542, 2.543, 2.544, 2.545, 2.546, 2.547, 2.548, 2.549, 2.550, 2.551, 2.552, 2.553, 2.554, 2.555, 2.566, 2.577, 2.578, 2.579, 2.580, 2.581, 2.582, 2.583, 2.584, 2.585, 2.596, 2.597, 2.508, 2.509, 2.510, 2.511, 2.512, 2.513, 2.514, 2.515, 2.516, 2.517, 2.518, 2.519, 2.520, 2.521, 2.522, 2.523, 2.524, 2.525, 2.526, 2.527, 2.528, 2.529, 2.530, 2.531, 2.532, 2.533, 2.534, 2.535, 2.536, 2.537, 2.538, 2.539, 2.540, 2.541, 2.542, 2.543, 2.544, 2.545, 2.546, 2.547, 2.548, 2.549, 2.550, 2.551, 2.552, 2.553, 2.554, 2.555, 2.566, 2.577, 2.578, 2.579, 2.580, 2.581, 2.582, 2.583, 2.584, 2.585, 2.596, 2.597, 2.508, 2.509, 
sequence. So if we have R3, this is R3. R3 is what? 3. And R2 is 1. So R2 plus R3, 3 plus 1 is 4. Then R3, R4 is 5. R3 is 3. So 5 plus 3 is 8. So like this, from this uh, uh, odd number series, I am generating the four times table. So I get 3 plus 1, 4, 5 plus 3, 8, 7 plus 5, 12. This I generate. So this is not rocket science. Is ke liye koi PhD nahi chahiye. Anybody with a little programming mathematics will know how to generate these series. Okay. And it all starts from the 0 to 17. And it's very simple. You just put this and just do the formula and you will get this. But why does this stop at 33? Why does this stop at 44? This is very interesting. For that, in our Sulabha Shastra, in our Vedas, there is something called the Vedic digital root. What is digital root? You take any number and make it into a single digit. Like suppose there is a number 13. 1 and 3 becomes 4. Yani tera number hai, tera uh, number hai, number tera hai. To usme ek hai, teen hai, to un dono ko jod diya aur char a gaya. Agar number 19 hai, 9 plus 1, 9 plus 1 kya hota hai? 10 hota hai. Lekin 10 mein do digit hai, there are two digits in 10. Therefore that becomes 1. So it becomes 1 plus 0, which is 1. So if I take the digital roots of this series, I get this sequence. 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. Then I will get 2, 4, 6, 8. Again, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9 and 2, 4, 6. Next number will be 8. After that, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 2, 4, 6, 8. 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 2, 4, 6, 8. Which is why it stops at 33. Because 33 ke baad, there is no point. Because it is only a repeating loop. Same thing with the four times table. Aap char guna table le lijiye. So you will get 4, 8. Now you see all this number. 5 plus 7 is 12. 12 is 1 plus 2 is 3. So 4, 8, 3. Then 9 plus 7 is 16. 16 is 1 plus 6, 7. So 4, 8, 3, 7, 2, 6, 1, 5, 9, 4, 8. Next will be what? 3, 7, 2, 6, 1, 5, 9. Then 4, 8. So they stop it here. Because there is no point of going on and on. Because it is a repeating cycle. So this is very, very important for us to understand. That this repeating cycles is the reason why this odd series stops at 33 and even series stops at 44. But even if you understood this, my question is, okay, I have explained to you, I have done digital root, I have taken modulus 9 and I have done and I have shown you this is the sequence. This is why it stops at 33. This is why it stops at 44. Believe me, even this knowledge, it is only the tattva of a living master who can give us this knowledge. Nobody in the past, I will say at least 2000 years, ever figured out why it should stop at 33, why it should stop at 44. It is the first time I am sharing with you why this is so. And this can happen only because there is a living master directing this knowledge. Today I know Mandala Vatika may have happened so that I can understand this knowledge and this knowledge understanding is happening because something else I need to understand. It could be because if I look at my journey with my master, it's 25 years I have been with him. Nothing in my past has been without a reason. Everywhere, you know, whether he teaches us the Siam course or he teaches us the advanced meditation or he teaches us our happiness program or he is teaching us uh, our uh, yoga vashishta or ashtagakra gita. Bhagavad Gita, whatever he is teaching us, he is teaching us because there is a seamless evolution of knowledge he is directing. So this is something very wonderful. Yeah. So going back to this. Now, okay, we have understood now why it stops at 33, why it stops at 44. But if you see this a little more carefully, and I think some of the people who put up their hand may have noticed it. Here, it is two times, let me just take the annotate again. In the odd number series, this is happening two times. 
one three five seven nine two four six eight. This happens once, but there is one three five seven nine two four six eight is implied because it will loop back. But why are there two loops shown? Here there is only one loop shown because after four eight again three seven two six one five nine happens. So this is understandable. Four times table stopping at forty four we can understand, but three times the odd number series could have easily stopped at seventeen. Why did it go to thirty three? Very very important to understand this. Okay, so now comes the pierce the resistance. I'm so excited. I'm sharing this with you because uh, I think it is just uh, very elegant math that is happening. So now we did what my friend, dear friend, uh, Burkhardt Polster taught us. So we take a circle and we put the modulus nine arithmetic. And if I put this modulus nine arithmetic, then what I do is when I am starting the eka chame, triyas chame, pancha chame, I am going to put these numbers one, three, five, seven, nine. So I am going to connect one to three, three to five, five. Okay, let me just get my annotator. That is very important. Otherwise, you won't know what I am doing. So let me move this out of the way. Okay, so I will do now here the modulus nine one three five seven nine. So I will do one. To three, to five, to seven, to nine, to two, to four, to eight, uh, to six, to eight, and then I come back to one, and then I, I have to do again, and we will see why that is happening again. Yeah, and then we will see our uh, uh, four times table. It will start with four, four, eight, right? Then three. You see this here. Four, eight, three. In the chance, it will go four, eight, twelve, sixteen, twenty. But when we do the digital route, it becomes four, eight, three, seven, two, six, one, five, nine, four, eight, uh, uh, four, eight, three, seven. So it gets looped back. Okay. So this looping, let us try to understand how it happens. Okay. So now watch this beautiful animation and uh, let us see if you understand and catch what is happening here. So did you see that? Did you see what happened? First, this outer mandala got created, which is a nine pointed mandala. It is the Navakona mandala. And then what happened was that an inner mandala inside that one more mandala. That is why we have got two sets. It could have stopped at 17, but it goes on to 33 because the uh, Rishi wanted us to explore the second one. Why the second one? I told you there are two creations. One creation is in the Brahman. It is in the external manifest universe. And there is one creation which is in our mind. So two mandalas form which is going to reflect in the outer world and the inner world. And both these represent the Purusha. This is the still principle. This is the observer. It never gets involved, but it is the one that is the substance, the summum bonum of creation. Two creations. One is the outer world. One is the inner world. Both these creations, it, this is a summum bonum. This is the absolute uh, substratum on which the Purusha is the one. But the Purusha never gets uh, manifest into anything. The Purusha is only the observer. Okay. Now let us go and see what is happening. So this is the male principle, the outer universe and the inner universe. So this is a part of the mandala because this is only the Purusha part. Now we come to the Prakriti part, which is in the four times table. Now, if I start to join 
four with eight, then with three, then with seven, then with two, then with six, something beautiful happens here. And let us see what that is. So you see this beautiful mandala which is come there. So what we will see here is that now in this, what you see here um, is this, this is the Prakriti. This is the dynamic principle. The earlier one was of static principle. And in this is very strange because where you see my cursor inside, there is a blue mandala that is there. Keep a watch on this because we will come back to this. In the Prakriti, somehow the Purusha gets reflected, even though they are completely different number sequences. One is coming from the odd number series. This is coming from the even number series. Yet the Purusha is reflected in the Prakriti. How beautiful is this? This is just amazing stuff. Yeah. So now what I will do is I'll just show you the animation where I am actually drawing this by hand, you know, just for you to understand how deep this knowledge is. So this is the beautiful interplay. So what we see, um, what we see here, what we see here is the female principle with the male principle embedded. The Purusha is reflected here. Yeah, the Purusha is reflected here, and we will come back to why this reflection is important. So the interplay of the Purusha principle with the dynamic Prakriti principle, which has the Purusha reflected in it, it leads to the creations, two creations, one in our side of our head and one in one outside us of the manifest uh, creation. Yeah. So here we see this uh, uh, beautiful uh, creation that is happening. So now what is important is, okay, we got this beautiful mandala. So the Chamakam series, so when the Chamakam is being, this is very important. This is very important. When the Chamakam series is being, 1, 3, 3, 5, 7, this is the number of sequences. When the number sequences are being chanted in the Rudra Homa, in the physical dimension, in the subtle dimension, a mandala is being drawn. Sukshma apna uh, 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 sukshma uh, uh, ecosystem me ek mandala ka naksha ban raha hai. The Rudra mandala is being created in the subtle world when you are listening to the Homa being chanted in your physical world. You know, this is something very beautiful. Yeah. So you have this nine pointed star, the nine pointed prakriti, which is created, and that is going to create something extraordinary. So when this mandala I saw, I looked at all the literature in India, in our Vedas, to find which mandala has got nine points. Ye Nabakona mandala, 
कौन सा है इसका बिल्कुल मुझे रेफरेंस नहीं मिला आई नेवर कुड फाइंड द रेफरेंस ऑफ द नाइन पॉइंटेड मंडला इन अवर वेदिक ट्रेडिशन वाई बिकॉज दिस नॉलेज वॉज सो सीक्रेट they embedded it in the chamakam as numbers and kept it safe from people so that people don't misuse this knowledge they just made it into a number sequence and left it because they know that with this number sequence we can bring back that mandal which is what gurudev is doing now he gave a hint somebody should search somebody should do research in this he just said like that very lightly but that research happens and this mandala pops up it is not there in our tradition okay so the question is what exactly is this nine pointed star ye navakona hota kya hai this is very important to understand because tab aapko pata chalega ki ye rudram chamakam mein rahasya kya hai and why this number sequence is so important in the rudra chamakam why did he say give me one give me three give me five when he is asking he is asking for the entire universe इनर यूनिवर्स आउटर यूनिवर्स दोनों पूछ रहा है मांग रहा है इट इज नॉट ओनली मांगिंग इट इज नॉट ओनली आस्किंग द डिवोटी इज डिमांडिंग द रुद्र तत्व टू बिस्टो वेन यू चांड द रुद्र तत्व हैज नो चॉइस इट हैज टू बिस्टो बिकॉज इन द सटल डायमेंशन द मंडला इज गेटिंग क्रिएटेड यू अंडरस्टैंड वट एम सेंग हियर इन द सटल वर्ल्ड when you are listening to the number sequences ek achame three achame panch achame sapta achame when you are listening to that a mandala is being created and the devotee has the right to demand rudra tatva bestow me that is why he in the chamakam you ask you ask unabashedly like a child i want lollipop i want five star i want chocolate i want ice cream i want everything you can demand because in the subtle world this navakona is being created so this is very very uh, <laughs> deep knowledge yeah so but what is the navakona this is the question now now the question comes okay we have found the mandala ha ah, ha so what how does it how does it point to what it is how does it point to giving us all this we are asking then came the one flash you know this is only guru tatva exploding in my brain suddenly i realize that this nine pointed star is nothing but one triangle that rotates two times trikon ko leke usko do bar ghumayenge to navakona mandala banta hai when you rotate a triangle two times with the same spacing you will get a nine pointed star so we will now go and understand this yeah so this is, is getting very exciting now yeah <laughs> because this is not the end abhi bahut bahut dur hai so now let us see this beautiful uh, uh, understanding ki ye this this one that i have here ye jo uh, navakona hai see this is a mandala this is having nine points but this nine points actually is something else You see that the navakona 
is actually three triangles. तीन ट्रायंगल है जिनकी रोटेशन से नवकोण मंडला बनता है सो so, अपना वेद में इन आवर वेदिक ट्रेडिशन टूडे वी डोंट हैव दिस बट इट सर्वाइव इन अदर ट्रेडिशन सो वी विल हैव अ क्विक ग्लांस एट व्हाट आर द अदर ट्रेडिशन इन द वर्ल्ड विच स्टिल हैव दिस नवकोण इन देर ट्रेडिशन बाकी कौन कौन सी पद्धति है कौन कौन सी रिलीजन है जिसमें नवकोणा आज भी जिंदा है उससे हमको आइडिया मिलेगा कि हमारे वेद में इसको कैसा छिपाया है और इसका सिग्निफिकेंस क्या है स्टिल आई हैव नॉट एक्सप्लेन टू यू व्हाट एक्चुअली दी दी समम बोनम ऑफ व्हाट दिस टॉक इज अबाउट आई एम जस्ट बिल्डिंग अप स्टेप बाय स्टेप आई एम बिल्डिंग अप सो दैट इन द एंड यू विल नो एग्जैक्टली वॉट दिस रहस्य इज okay so now we will go and see what are the other traditions where we have this uh, uh thing okay so now we can see this is the uh, let me just take the as a spotlighter yeah so this is the three triangles now these three triangles appear in other traditions one is the buddhist tradition apna baudhik paddhati mein ये इसको एंडलेस नॉट बोलते हैं दैट मींस इट सिग्निफाइज हाउ व्हेन वी आर इन द माया इट इज एंडलेस सफरिंग इज गारंटीड बिकॉज वी आर कॉट इन दिस इफ यू सी दिस ट्रायंगल इट डजंट हैव अ बिगिनिंग और एन एंड इट इज कंटिन्यूअसली इट कीप्स गोइंग ऑन एंड ऑन इंटरलॉक एंड एक ए ब्यूटिफुल मंडला व्हेन आई वाज डूइंग अ प्रोजेक्ट इन भूटान अ कपल ऑफ इयर्स अगो the royal uh, family had invited me to do a 1100 acre township uh, on the banks of the amuchu river and when i had gone to one of their monasteries ye ek hi rassi se ye pura mandala navakona mandala bana hua hai this entire mandala has been created so intricately it is very big huh? it may be around 30 feet by 30 feet and it is put up on the wall and this is nothing but one thread one thread continuously which creates this uh, endless knot the in buddhist they call it the endless knot iska koi ant nahi hota hai kyunki wo loop hota hai aur ye dikhata hai ki hum samsar mein kaise ye maya ki jhal mein hum phase rehte hain it's very beautiful depiction apparently it takes a very long time for the monks to make this knot Uh, they 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 do a lot of ritual purification before they do it and they do it in a in like oh, jaise hamare mandala vatika mein hum mandala ka naksha banate hai na when in mandala vatika when we draw the naksha there is no geometry it is just the tatva which tells you how to draw the mandala right and all the people who have done the course they are so aware of this and all of you share this with me you think it is very complicated you have not touched the geometry box for 25 years and yet when you pick up and let the tatva draw it for you it is just a breeze so ye pura buddhist mandala jo rassi se banta hai navakona mandala this signifies how we are caught in the endless knot of life that is suffering is guaranteed <laughs> to is unka matlab ye hai secondly this george gurjev he created something called a enneagram enneagram tells there are nine different kinds of people and just like we have zodiac signs and all that it is a whole science based on how if you know how to tap this enneagram enneagram is the navakona mandala you see it has got nine corners if you tap the nine corners correctly and center your energy then you can become enlightened aisa inka soch hai hai na and yeah, let me just share a small uh, this this gurjev is a incredible fellow but what is amazing is this actually comes from indus valley it comes from uh, uh, afghanistan north no, northwest pakistan area even gurjev found it there apparently but we will i will just give you a small video on that the enneagram of personality is a system used by numerous mental health professionals to get more insight into one's character and as a method for self development the enneagram consists of nine personality archetypes that are interconnected in different ways 
the Enneagram leaves room for overlap between and within different personality types. There's no consensus on the exact origins of the Enneagram, but it's certain that the use and meaning of it have changed throughout the centuries, as there are different interpretations and usages by different people from several time periods. The Enneagram symbol appears in the Islamic Sufi tradition and variations of it are found in the sacred geometry of the Pythagoreans. Some believe that Jewish Neoplatonist philosopher Philo brought the Enneagram into esoteric Judaism and was later represented in the Kabbalistic ninefold symbol, the Tree of Life. The Enneagram, as we know it today, is based on the teachings of the Bolivian psycho-spiritual teacher Oscar Ichazo and the Chilean psychiatrist Claudio Naranjo. Naranjo was influenced by Russian mystic George Gurdjieff, who made the Enneagram figure publicly known and has possibly retrieved it from a Sufi monastery in Afghanistan at the end of the 19th century. So, here the Sufi tradition has this Navakona Mandala. And in that Navakona Mandala, they have created how to control your inner universe, your personality types, how you interact with other personality types, and how you can attain enlightenment through this knowledge. So this is Sufi tradition. Then we have another very beautiful one, which is, uh, today he is, uh, uh, everybody talks about it, and that is our... Uh, uh, the Enneagram of person. Uh, oh, no, this one is about the Baha'i tradition. You know, in the Baha'i religion, in Delhi, we have the Baha'i temple. Baha'i faith is another very interesting religion where they have this Navakona mandala. Okay. And you can see this. This video. This beautiful temple in Delhi. And it's a very powerful faith. Some of the richest people belong to this religion. And they get the abundance because of this Navakona mandala. So you can see here this beautifully, you know, the outer mandala, which is the outer universe and the inner mandala, which is our uh, inside our head. And then the Prakriti that is there, you know, which is manifesting inside. You can see this nine pointed star here. So if you have a drone photo from the top, you can see the entire mandala so beautifully coming up there. Now, this is also there in the tradition of somebody called Nikola Tesla. Yeah, Nikola Tesla also has got this Navakona Mandala, the nine pointed star, but he gives it a different interpretation. And he says this has the code secret to the universe. And it's called the Tesla code. Yeah. And the Tesla code is also based on this. Our Vedas, they put the secret into the Chamakam and, and forgot about it. But other traditions took it forward. And I will show you a small uh, understanding of this Tesla's uh, secret code. Yeah. In vortex maths, everything adds up to nine, six, and three. Polarized everything. One, two, four, eight, seven, and five describe the physical world. Therefore, the three, six, and nine are not physical, but they govern the physical world at the quantum level. The example is sound. In vortex math, the triangle or the three, six and nine are the highest energy that governs the physical world at the quantum level, meaning that everything in the universe is preceded by vibrational energy, but it's purely mathematical. If there is something that you desire, you simply have to tune into the vortex where that higher frequency or what we call the balance resides. Meaning that if you want to be awakened, the key to align yourself to the vibrational frequency inside of that vortex is the way forward. So you can see whether it is Tesla's secret code or the Baha'i religions, the nine petal lotus, or whether it's the Enneagram of Gurdjieff, the Sufi tradition, 
it is all coming. See, Buddhist tradition, the endless knot. Buddhist tradition came from Indian tradition. It did not come by itself. They took it from the Vedas also. So, in our Vedic tradition, we kept the Rahasya in the Chamakam as a sequence of numbers. But some other traditions, they knew a little more and they have kept it alive in their traditions. Yeah. But I want to go back to our tradition and find out the Rahasya, the real Rahasya. Other traditions touch upon it. They get the benefit of it, but they don't know the actual underlying logic. But in our tradition, in a philosophy called Sankhya philosophy. Sankhya philosophy is one of our oldest Hindu philosophy. It talks about duality, cause, effect, observer, observe. And it talks about this duality as the fundamental principle of all creation. In Sankhya philosophy, you can find the Rahasya of the Chamakam number sequence. So we will now explore that very quickly. Yeah. So. In vote. So the secret. Now this is of course Rishi Kapila, a very very uh, extraordinary individual. And if you see the data that is there in the Sankhya philosophy, it is something that you can never imagine. Yeah. Uh, you see, for example. Uh, the third sutra, you know, it talks about Mula Prakriti. Yeah. And uh, you can see here the translation. Actually, once Sadashivam um, uh, near Coimbatore, he had given me this reference and uh, this translation. And you can see this is the most magnificent theorem in Vedic science that defies, identifies the critical states that critical state that create the manifest the phenomena through axiomatic interactive formulation. And it is pure physics. But if you listen to the mantra, it sounds like this. Mula prakriti ravikriti mahadadhyaha prakriti vikritayaha sapta shoda shakastu vikaro na prakriti na vikriti hi purushaha. So that's what it sounds like. But it tells you something very, very beautiful. It actually is pure physics and maths. In fact, I had one of our uh, participants, Hari, who is a mathematician, and I asked him to explore our mandala, uh, you know, the, the math of our mandala uh, through this, you know, and maybe he can get some uh, clues out of this. And if you see here, this is actually our Sankhya Karika. Our Sankhya Karika, when you take it and convert it into math and explain what is Parama Purusha or Nitya Purusha? What is the uh, PX ratio? How does stress um, increase in a, uh, in a uh, homeostatic system? How, what is inward gravitational ac uh, acceleration? This is actually there in the Sankhya Shastra in detail. In high detail, this is explained. Yeah. Now, let me not go into this detail. Let me try and explain to you in a very simple format. What so here, if you see, actually, Mula Prakriti explains uh, things like a Purusha, which is actually our uh, Purusha is our um, uh, it is the Planck mass, and then where quarks come from, the Mahat, the Prakriti, the Vrikriti, the Vikaro, the Vritti. All this is pure. Uh, quantum physics, yeah, and it is so beautifully explained in uh, Sankhya Karika. But let us not go into that detail. Let me try and explain to you in a very simple way. What Sankhya Karika says is there is a Purusha which is pure consciousness, and there is a Prakriti. Actually, the Purusha does not participate in anything. He is always the observer, untouched, unmoved, and the Purusha and the Prakriti can exist without interacting with each other. However, at some times, they come near each other. And when they come, when the Purusha, when the Prakriti comes near the Purusha, something very beautiful happens. A reflection of the Purusha is created in the Prakriti. And then she is called the Mula Prakriti. Now, do you understand now what I was talking to you about in this, uh, when the Prakriti Mandala popped up, you saw that there was a Purusha that was reflected inside, right? That is what is being talked about here. So the Purusha does not actually participate in creation. He is the summum bonum, he is the underlying everything, but he does not participate. It is the Prakriti 
which has the reflection of the purusha when she is now called the mula prakriti which takes care of creation so purusha remains the observer and the purusha as a reflection creates the mula prakriti which is now ready to create how does the creation happen first the mula prakriti creates a mahat or buddhi which is the uh, the 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 buddhi that is the intelligence it is the discrimination yukti and the individuation that means it first in this uh, nothingness that first desire to that 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 desire which that intelligence which creates the desire is the mahat and when this actually creates that wave it is the ahankara up to now no creation has happened the uh, uh, ego the ahankara allows for self identity i am just, just summarizing the entire sankhya karika into a very simple uh, way now comes the important part the once the ahankara is created there is a equilibrium of three triangles the sattva rajas and tamas sattva is the lightness the illumination rajas is the impelling force that is the dynamic force and tamas is the solid force from the ahankara this three equilibrium triangle start to move up to now no creation has happened no um, no uh, subtle creation has happened no gross creation has happened but these three triangles go start to start to oscillate and this is the three triangles which we refer to in our nine pointed navakona the chamakam sequence is talking about the imbalance that happens in these three triangles and when that happens from the imbalance in these three triangles from the oscillation of these three triangles the mind is formed and the pancha mahabhutas the tanmatras and the mind is formed from the mind we have got one universe which create which gets created with the gnanendriyas and the kamendriyas and then from the pancha mahabhutas the pancha mahabhutas the subtle elements get created and the whole universe gets created but for all this to happen whether the inner world or the outer world it is these three triangles of sattva rajas and tamas that are important and our chamakam goes here so you see this impelling force against the illumination and the solid this is what creates the universe inside our head and the universe outside us the gross universe and the mind universe is created by these three triangles which is signified in this uh, beautiful uh, navakona the mandala yeah that is there in the chamaka so when i took this entire presentation and gave it to the master this was so beautiful people who are watching him they were saying he was had such an amused look on his face and he was like looking at a child telling him what he already knows <laughs> you know what i'm saying it is like the the parent yeah the the master knows everything and he is watching his child tell him what he knows so he has this a very amused look on his face and he is looking and i am telling him gurudev this is happening this is happening mula prakriti is happening this is happening and he is looking at the whole thing and he is just he is he is he has got that look of that uh, that loving look of amusement which a parent will have when the child is coming and explaining something he has learnt in school okay so this was my experience when i presented this to the master it was such a such a beautiful moment uh, moment for me and uh, uh, then of course uh, he he said some very of course he was so happy he was so happy that uh, you know i had uh, you know brought this i don't know maybe after 2000 years somebody has actually brought this navakona mandala from they have regenerated it from the uh, uh, chamakam so and then he explained to me and he said go look in deeper the sri chakra is embedded in this and then he also said something to also look there is something about dna which is embedded in this 
So I am in the process now of looking to that. And there are some people who talk about this 33,000 pairs of mitochondrial DNA. That is why it stops at 33. And then the 44, this is actually, it starts from one, therefore 44 uh, million uh, nuclear uh, bases, uh, which are there in the nuclear DNA, uh, the base pairs. And therefore there is some connection between this and that. So this is what I am still doing more research on this. And of course, how the uh, Sri Chakra is embedded in this Navakona or the Navakona is embedded in the Sri Chakra, that's another beautiful uh, exploration which will happen at some point. But at this time, uh, I wanted to you know, share this much with you. I had programmed this talk to be for two hours. And uh, with the grace of the master, I think it was all headed that way. So now that we have understood all this, how creation happens, what is the chamakam sequences? How that is creating a mandala and how you can draw that mandala from the digital root and the modulus nine arithmetic, you can draw the mandala. When you draw the mandala, you get the navakona. But what is the navakona? It is three triangles, rajas, tamas and sattva. So everything in this universe, whether it is living, non-living, it has got these gunas. And when these gunas start to oscillate, creation happens. Okay. So when the devotee is demanding, give me one, give me three, give me five, he is asking for the whole universe. He is asking for the internal universe inside his mind. He is asking for the external Brahman outside. And he says, give me. Just by doing the sequence, he has gone to the root because from the three gunas, the mind and the tanmatra, the subtle element happens, five subtle elements happen. Yeah. So the, the trigunas supersede and in Sankhya Karika, these equations are there. How this from the Mahat, the Ahankar happens, how from the Ahankar, the three gunas will separate and it happens at the Planck volume. It's so beautiful, the mathematics of it. So you're talking about creation even before creation happens. And that is why the Rudra Homa is so, so beautiful. It is so powerful because you are going before creation, you know. So people, all those who have done Mandala Vatika here, the course, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about, right? Because you all experience this in the course. And those who have not done the course, please go to our website, mandalavatika.com and register. It's, it's one of the most fascinating things you will do because this is purely Guru Tattva that is channeling this knowledge. So we under, after understanding all this, now I will play the chamakam, the numer number sequences of the chamakam for you with the animation. And you can, you can keep your eyes open, but just feel the chamakam. Just feel this mandala being created in the subtle world and understand the beauty of what the master has given us. Yeah. So Om Guru Bhyo Yanamaha. Hari Om. I will finish this talk with this particular one. There are too many questions for me to answer. I will not take the uh, do the answers now, but I will go through the chat. And everybody who has asked me the questions, if you can ping me on my mobile, yeah, uh, you can get my coordinates from anybody. It is uh, my WhatsApp number is India number. It is nine uh, six one one. 922480 9611922480 if you can ping me on this number your question give me a little time but i will definitely answer okay so now let us all relax huh? let us uh, just take uh, uh, a few deep breaths and let's do an omkar and uh, after that i will take you through this very simple uh, uh, part of the chamka yeah okay so all of us can take a deep breath in and breathe out. Now let us all chant Om together. Breath in. Om. Breath in.
you may slowly open your eyes and you can keep your eyes open you can watch the screen but just listen now with the understanding that you have had after this talk So thank you all for being a part of this session and I hope you all enjoyed it. 9.58, how beautifully the master you know, stretches and the time so that it fits in exactly in the two hours that I had allocated for this. A lot of questions are there. I will do my best to answer each one of them to you. And those who know me in Mandala Vatika know that I'm so prompt at answering every one of your uh, messages. Yeah, so I will do that. So next time you sit in the Rudra Puja and the Chamakam, the number sequences happen. I'm sure with the grace of our master, all of us, our experience will be something else. Yeah. So once again, deeply indebted to the lotus feet of my master who can channel such extraordinary knowledge, extraordinary experiences to us in such a simple form. So once again, thank you so much for joining. Jai Gurudev.